the court. There we go. Now we all know meetings being recorded. We have a Zane here. I guess I can add that to my names. Uh, welcome everybody. Does anybody, did anybody do anything exciting with their coding since I last saw you over the weekend? Working on my, um, my showcase. Good. How's it coming along? Good. I'm glad. Uh, okay. I'm trying to get all, all our guests into this name thingy. Right, we've got Ava. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Ava. We've got Fang's iPad. We've got Niles. Hi, Niles. We've got Kai 11. Have you here as Madam Kai. We don't have Goose. I'm gonna have to take off some names, I feel like. Anyway, let's get started. Um, first thing, I will go to the leaderboard. Because since it's become it's become a new week now, uh, Gotham, your house is gone. If we went to last month, it would still be up here, but it's uh, it's a new week. So Miley has the top two spots. You can believe it. We've got the soccer goalie game that we had previously. Miley, we're just saying that you're number one and two on the leaderboard because. Uh, but it's a new week, so we've got cool stuff like this. Somebody made our boy Winston into a snow angel. I'm fifth place. Your fifth place with your hockey jersey, yeah. I've got my parrot mug again. Uh, yeah, so that's basically over the leaderboard. I, I scrolled down a little bit. I didn't see any of our friends, really. I mean, just the same stuff that we've already seen. Do you want to turn on your videos now? There's Ski Free. Uh, oh, we can select a character to play as. Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> it snows. Okay, this deserved to get a lot of points. I'm glad this one got a lot of points. What What do you guys want to... Who do you guys want to play as? We've got Blue Dude, Beaver, Penguin. Penguin. Penguin? Oh, okay. Beaver? I already played as Penguin, so I'll play as Beaver. Beaver. Ouch. You could actually do this because Matthew also did character selector. Right, right. Could we play as Tim? I want to play as Tim. Anyway, uh, today I wanted to talk about four loops and arrays because they play nice together. But before that, that, I did take a look at falling ball. Anybody else have any requests? for today's class webinar majig. Oh. Okay. So I figured out how this one works. Uh, it took me like 20 minutes of staring at it this morning, but I did figure it out. So we've got these, this obstacle function and it has the X and the X location, or sorry, the Y location. The X location is constantly, or it just starts from zero and goes to four. Actually, it's, two different but so the, the width determines how far it'll extend from the left hand side so you can only go up to 325 so you'll never get one straight black bar across it always has to go to at least 250 to 325 and then and it has start two is its other the x location of the second rectangles so like this would be width and this would be start two with star two. And you see the holes are always the same size because of hole size, this variable, which is up here, 75. I can change I this it. to make it really easy for myself. You see the next rectangle starts 200 away from the previous one. Because of draw obstacles, so it <laughs> looks through the array of obstacles, says um, it draws a rectangle at X location zero, goes until um, it has the width of width, and it then it draws a second one starting at the obstacle's start two point, and then it goes what, actually for 400. What does the delete obstacles do? Delete obstacles. So once the obstacle, the black, gets to the top, 
they disappear from the array. It basically works like a Q, whereas like there's like a like a, li a line at um like Tim Hortons or something. The first person once the first person gets their order taken, they get moved out, and then the next ones get bumped up. And then when new obstacles as the screen scrolls up, new obstacles are added to the bottom. So it's like taking them off the top and adding new ones to the bottom. Have you, what does you, the random do in the if statement? The which if statement? Um, in oh. the delete obstacles. So it generates a random number between zero and eight. And if it equals, if it's less than one, so if it's zero, uh, what's the probability that a number between zero and eight will be zero? It's going to be like a one, one in eight. Nine. One in. Uh, I don't think it includes eight as the topper upper topper the upper value. It might, but if it does, then it's one in nine. If it doesn't, it's one in eight. So basically, it's used to generate probability. So it has like a one in eight slash nine chance to uh, increase the speed. If I make this. Zero one, it'll get faster a lot. Well, faster. See, it's already <laughs> enough. I mean, I made it super easy <laughs> myself by making the. Yeah, see? <laughs> if I make it one and 25, Whoa. then it won't get fast very quickly at all. I should definitely change the whole size so it's not so easy because I'm 100% cheating. But you know what? When it's your project, you get to cheat if you want to. So it hasn't gotten faster yet, you know, or maybe it has, but not very much. Yeah, it has that definitely. See it. The probability really makes a difference. Uh, so I'll change this whole size again because I feel bad. Uh, Seven fifty. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Seventy-five. See, and oh. then if we make um, it because in the draw obstacles function, when it draws the second obstacle, it gives it a length of four hundred. So even if it starts way over here, it'll be sure to cover the rest of the screen. If I make that ten. And you can see that the obstacles, what? They don't go very far. If I make it 50, they extend a little bit farther. And the way that it checks is it uses a get function. Now, I have never seen a get function in a what? JavaScript. Um, get? No, but it's like get, get image. Yeah, it's similar. So what it's, what it's getting in this case is the color value at position x why the mouse x and the how far down the ball is it also has a move move character draw character where is it move character if so if the ball is running into a black thing then it pushes it up and if it's not it moves it back down to 350 so you can play the game this is your moving one does that make sense yeah. Do you have any other questions while I check the chat? Um, for the move character, can you explain that one more time? Mm -hmm. So sets the fill to red, so that's the color of the ball, draws an ellipse at position mouse x, and you know what mouse x is. Yeah. Uh, char y is a variable declared here as 100. So it starts at position 100. You see that? Yeah. And then it says, if um, it's being blocked by a black thing, if, if the coordinate, uh, if the pixel at position mouse x char y, which at that point was 100. So if mouse x 100 is black, then make it move up along with the obstacles. So okay. the obstacles aren't pushing it. It just coincidentally follows their behavior. Okay. Um, and then else if, uh, so if it's not black, if it's not blocked by something black, um, then it keeps pushing it down until it hits 350. So you can see if I do this really okay. easy side, it keeps, so it's stuck at 350 right now, 350Y. It's not going any lower. But as soon as it gets bumped by something, it starts going up the screen instead of down. Okay. It doesn't move any further down when it hits that bar. So that's why it's, it's negative equals obstacle speed plus equals obstacle speed. If okay. I can increase the obstacle speed to like 10, uh. then both the ball and uh. the obstacles move faster. Um, what was the other point? Okay. If I, I sorry, go ahead. Nothing. 
if I get negative. Oh, nice. If I change this, it'll only get stuck on the black outlines. Okay. Like it'll the, see how they're they're gray, but they're outlined with black. So if I do that, and then I go. Um, what do you mean you know, like stuck? Like it stops moving. Oh, see how this one it doesn't impact. Oh yeah, it that doesn't was so touch easy. anymore. So it's because I've made there be no black pixels appearing on the screen. Oh, okay. If I change I, the fill back to zero, yeah. then it will get st stopped oh. by the black colors. And that's because of the get function. If okay. get at that location where the ball is, is equal to black, um, move it up the screen. Because negative, negative makes it go lower in value towards zero when y is zero at the top of the screen. So I encourage you to mess around with the values here, see what they do, explore it by yourself as well. Um, checking the chat again. <laughs> I checked the leaderboard already. It wasn't much different than it was before. Uh, it was... I have one last question. What's your question? It's what does um, the... Sixth place. Three, one sec. One, two, three. Just to create um, a function that moves the characters based on user's mouse movement. Ah, so in this case, um, it's moved because it's, it's an ellipse that's being drawn. So if you okay. wanted to use an image instead, you would look at the place where it said ellipse and replace it with get image. Get image. Yeah, let's do that. What images do you guys like? Winston. Who baby else? Baby Winston. Winston. Baby Winston. Yeah, baby Winston. Good. Oh. So you would change. Does somebody the have a huge problem with baby Winston? No. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, I shouldn't have put one there. This is. This is Trixie. Trixie. <laughs> it's Trixie. <laughs> Get image. Uh, okay, let me look. You gave it a fill. Uh, five. Sorry? You, can you change the tint of a picture in Hatch? Oh, I have not tried to do that, but do that what? sounds like a good research question. How would you find that out, do you think? Research. <laughs> Or I did the wrong thing. Trial and error. I would try researching JavaScript, uh, change the tint of a picture. Uh, there were some cool color okay. functions that Niles was talking about, I think. Lerp color and blend color. Yeah. yeah so if it, ha it might not be those, but it might be something like that that is included with JavaScript. It's processing JavaScript, just for the record. So here we go. Here's baby Winston. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Wow, it's mode. gonna die. <laughs> That's true. It is. <laughs> There's our baby Winston. It's not following the mouse. Cur oh, not it's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it increases. It's. It doesn't follow the mouse Y. So I'm gonna change the background. Oh. Where's our background? Make it black so you can't see the rods. <laughs> you know why that wouldn't work? Why? <laughs> because it stops when it sees something black. Oh. oh, so it's just going to be stuck in one place. Yeah. Can you just try it? Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. just immediately, this is death to Winston. <laughs> I could make it zero, zero, fifty, okay. and have it be like a very dark blue. Wow. Oh, it's so, I can't see it. I, I, now I can see it. Cute can little I, baby Winston. Without even my glasses, like I can't like 30. See it. Sorry? 30. Make, the 30. make the whole 30? <laughs> no, make the blue 30. Oh, the blue 30. It's very, very dark here. Yeah. Even if I made it like uh, one, <laughs> it would the game would still work, but you wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Who wants to know about four loops? Um... Too bad because we're gonna talk about them anyway. Um, is it, is it the hatch you, reference is it, menu? 
Yes. If I change like the VAR ceiling collision, if I changed it to, for example, like it collides only if it's like mm -hmm. blue, would it work the same way? Yes. Um, ceiling collision has to do with when the character passes the top of the screen. So if I change this to 100, Winston would die if he got to there instead of to off the screen. Um, um, to change the color, you have to change what's at whatever's inside uh, color on line 48. There? Wait, there's a, but wouldn't, oh, okay. Does that make sense? So you'd have to change only the color to change the whole thing? To, to change, change what color the bars are that it gets stopped by. If you change the color, okay. you have to change the color of the bars to match. Otherwise, like when I made them gray, they it would it won't interact. The color that it gets stopped by has to same be the same as the color that the rectangles actually are. Okay, but can I make the rectangles a different color and the stroke for like same color and will it still work? It'll still work. Yeah. Okay. Try it. If you don't believe me, you can always try it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm out to get you. What do you mean by that? Oh, uh, you know, as your coach, I want him to see you fail, not, you know, help you succeed and everything. Because <laughs> that's what coaches do. They mess with, they just, they make, it's harder to learn, not easier. I'm being sarcastic. I want you to succeed. Uh, anyway, do, what are for loops? You guys are geniuses, so what are, what are for loops? There is a big Winston. Yes. Okay. For loop means to recreate something instead of doing it again and again. I'm going to agree with that. Like copycat it. <laughs> to copycat some code. I like yeah. that. That makes sense to me. I don't know why I've written hello a gazillion times. I'll get rid of that. Um, yeah, kind of, like, kind of like you don't have to define, define it like 20 times just to get 20 circles. You can get 20 yeah. circles by one line of code. Yeah, so that was kind of, my next question was, why would you ever use a for loop? Oh. And it's, but yeah, you're, that's good. It's good, you're ahead of me. You, you should be teaching this class, I guess. Uh, it, it's so that if you want to make 400 circles, like I've made, but you don't want to write out, like, yeah, ellipse, 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 ellipse. Oh, they're gonna do this. 380 more times, guys. <laughs> and then it's super easy. You could just copy and paste it. <laughs> you could, but then your code would be 8,000 lines long. And then, like, oh, we were fun. talking about those True. other, you know, we True. were talking about projects like... And you'd have to change the coordinates for each and every one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you have to make it, like, it, projects like this, wouldn't it be annoying if there was one for loop that took up, like, 400 lines of code? No. This whole yeah. game is only only uh, 275 Dude, lines what? long. Can you play it quickly? Uh, this version is broken. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Where's the other version? Matthew, do you mind if I show everyone your shooter game? <laughs> is, my, is Matthew here? No problem. No problem. Sweet. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it, the other version is also a little bit broken and we're working on that. I tried for, just so you know, Matthew, I did try for an hour today to implement while loops and it's just buggy and I think Why? it's gonna work. We'll talk about while loops today, actually. What's a while loop? Well, you're about to find out. That's what I do with it's Ender games. Dragon. <laughs> it is the Ender <laughs> Dragon. But here's what happens. All if right. you let three get onto the screen and then you shoot it, it crashes. What? So we're trying to figure out why that is. And you oh. can change the color. Uh, and, you know, well, yeah, okay. Wait, what? Crashed there, too. So, you know, we're working on it. It's a time. It's a time. Mm. Uh, so that's why I, you know, want to talk about my while loops because they're slightly mm. different than for loops. Uh, oh. While. So while uses our conditionals that we learned last week. Oh, you remember what we said conditionals were? Conditional. Yeah. What's a conditional, Miley? Pardon? Oh, What's conditional are used in if statements. Yeah, they're also used in while, while loops. So if something is true, 
I know that's spelled wrong. It's funnier that way. Do a thing. While loops Wait, work exactly the same way, except it does it over and over and over until this thing stops being true. Conditionals are also used to um, specify a piece of code. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't exactly know what you mean, but I believe you. <laughs> Sounds right. Sounds right to me. Um, so let's compare if statements to while loops because on the surface they kind of look like they could be the same. Like Why? So if I said if uh, I have food on my plate and then it says take a bite, how many bites would I take of this food? Maybe to 20 to 30. <laughs> I, ideally, I would want to take 20 to 30 bytes so that it's all gone. But if I use an if statement, it only executes once. Do I have food on my plate? Then I will take one bite and then that code is over, moving on to other things. So you can just put a while loop inside it. Yes. What I want to do is say, while I have food on my plate, take a bite. And then it goes to the top. Is it still true? Do I still have food on my plate? Yes, they'll take a bite. Do I still have food on my plate? Yes, until this becomes false. Oh, I have no more food. Then why would I take a bite? I wouldn't. It would move on to clean the dishes or whatever. You could even use a while loop for that. While dish is dirty, clean the dishes, you know? Uh, do you guys have any examples? Okay, I'm gonna... I have <laughs> while if equals zero. I want, um, I want um, one, one person to, I'll spin the wheel of names. One person comes up with a conditional and the other person comes up with the code. So one person says while blah, blah, blah. And the other person blah, says something you have to do while that is true. So they don't even have to make sense together, but you know, who's gonna, okay, who's here? Does anyone not see their name on the list and I'll be taking out people? Mm -hmm. Two, I'll, Someone's there's here. a pair of. Oh, I did. Thank you. Good eye. Uh, participants. Someone's here. Oh, someone is here. Goose is here. Kyle's here. Uh, we have Hutter. We have Hutter. Do we have Adrian? We have Adrian. Uh, someone. We have Ava. We have Ava, I believe. Do you have Tatiana? No. Tatiana's gone. Okay. Do you have Amazing Captain? No. TV Watcher 1000 is not here. Not here. Oh, boo. People. Zane, Zane is not here. <laughs> Zane is not here? Cool. Uh, Austin, is Austin here? No, I don't see Austin. I don't want it to land on somebody who's not here. Okay, are we good? Boo. One oh, Satchel is not here. Four, four. Oh, Fing's iPad. Is Fing's iPad not here? Oh, no, they are here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, iPad. Where'd you go? Okay, I'm gonna spin it first. Three, first no, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We're missing two people from here. Uh, so who? Sh what name should I add? Um, I'm looking. No, the thing is, someone's blank. Name is like blank. Blank. Okay, if you're blank, then you don't get to answer. You need a name to go on the list. I can't call you. Wow. Because then nobody will know what I'm talking about. Okay, who's gonna pick what our me? You're on the list. Who's it gonna and, be? And in Someone. Fact, in, yes, yes, no. yes, yes. <laughs> let's go. Good smile. I, I, I didn't want to get picked. That's why. Wow. You can you can put it in the chat or you can say it out loud. What's our conditional? While what? Or you can pass if you don't want to come up with something. Okay. He's typing it. Apparently, I'm talking to the Hutter himself. Okay. Pass. Pass. I'm just gonna Maybe it'll be Gotham this time. No, no. I don't want to read over. It'll, 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 it'll be my way. Oh, okay, you know what? Let's just... What? Hutter, it's Hutter. It's Hutter. Hutter, what's our conditional? Oh, that's so uh -huh. What do you think our conditional should be? I just want to make sure you heard me or all that screaming. <laughs> Announcement. IDK. IDK. Okay, so I'll make up one. Don't Let's spin again. Wait, 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 spin, spin again. again. <laughs> spin again. Spin again. <laughs> Ooh, Hutter. Be... 
Adrian. 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 Yeah, it's Adrian. <laughs> Adrian. Adrian, it's your time to shine. What's our conditional? He's trying to. He's or you can pass. You pass. <laughs> Just, just remove the people who okay, you guys pass. are freaking losers. Can I do it? Can I? Not me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you guys can just make up your so okay, nobody just, wants to do it. Just remove the people. Someone's gonna be gone. Okay. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I acted like somebody had, like, hurt me, but I... Highlight it. Um, uh, Adrian. Um... Uh, Okay, this is the last time I'm spinning. If he doesn't want to, Miley and Gotham are doing it. Yeah. Pass. Can we just spin again? Because I want to see if I get it. No, we've already spun it like four times. One more time. No. We're going to do the Wheel of Names again. This isn't the last Wheel of Names. One last time. It's okay. Miley, what's your conditional? Oh, me. Okay. God. Gotham can do it. Okay, Gotham, what's your conditional? I will solve Ruby's Cube under one minute. Uh, that's, that's a good conditional. It's not something we can do. Okay, while I am able to solve a Rubik, Rubik's Cube in no. this episode of Brenda Can't Spell Rubik's in under one minute. So while while that is true about you, while you're still able to do that, Miley, what should he do? While I am able to solve a Rubik's cube in under one minute, take a bite of it. I <laughs> should also be able to. So this is something you should do. Should do actively. What do you mean? Like, can I like, do it, like not, watch I TV? Should be able to take a run. I should take a run or go for a run. I should bake a Rubik's cube cake. And annoy my little brother. <laughs> little brother. Obligatory semicolon. <laughs> you know, your code doesn't work if it doesn't have semicolons. Doesn't matter if it's an English sentence. You know, this is the part that's important. Okay, oh, so, put brackets. So when, when he stops being able to solve a Rubik's Cube in under one minute, only then will he stop annoying his little brother. Does that sound fair? No. <laughs> Too bad, because it's the way it works. Um. Oh, I forgot semicolon. I have semicolons. Uh, while oh. loops don't need one. Oh. Because the while, if I said, Instead while I am able to make a Rubik's Cube, I haven't said anything I'm going to do. This just means do nothing. The conditional isn't an action to perform, so it doesn't need a semicolon. Hey, Jeff Loop from Mommy. Uh, okay. So, what if we wanted to do it a certain number of times? How would we change this while keeping it a while loop? Because the while loops are basically the same as for loops, except with numbers. Um, so, uh, you just... Here, I, I made up an illustration. I'm going to have to unplug my headphones. Oh, maybe I won't. Um, illustration. I want somebody to... I'm going to do some exercises because that's basically a for loop. I have to do like 10 sit-ups. I literally tried to do a push-up this morning and I realized I can't do it. So I'm going to be doing sit-ups. Uh, will somebody be my counter? Me. <laughs> Gotham and Miley, uh, come up with a shared you. hive mind name. <laughs> counters. You're like the professional counters. So professional counters, how many sit-ups have I done right now? Zero. Zero, that is correct. I mean, no. So the beginning of this webinar. See, I've made up a whole mat and everything. Okay, so am I done? No. How many, how many, how many clock, clock. Done? 100. Zero. No, I've done zero. Oh. You guys are the number counters. I have oh. done zero sit-ups. So am I done? Let's say I want to no. do 10. I want to do 10 sit-ups. Okay. So then I okay. do... Okay. One. So how many have I done? One. Ten. So am I done? No. No. No, why not? Because you have to do, you do 10. You have to do uh, 9 more. 9 more. Yeah, I have to do 9 more. Okay. How many have I done now? 2. Two. Eight Am more. I done? 8 more. 8 more. Yeah, okay, so. Mm, 4. No, that, that's 3. 4. 5. 6. 7. 8. 9. 10. You did 10. Okay. You're done. You're done. Am I done now? Yes. yes. Yes, because our number equals 10. 
So while my number was less than 10 or wasn't 10, I had stop. to do more sit-ups. So you can translate this into code uh, conveniently enough. I didn't just, you know, make you watch me exercise because I'm weak, but I'll, even though I am. Why? Um, while my number of sit-ups, number of sit-ups is not equal, you remember this is the way you write, not equal to 10. We could also say is less than 10. Um, either one works. Do a sit-up. And then what? We have to count, right? But the computer doesn't count automatically. So we have to give it the ability to count. Every time you want the computer to remember something, you have to make a variable. I'm going to call it I because that's traditional, but I could also call it counter. So uh, every time you do a sit up, counter goes up. So then first it'll be zero. And then I do a sit up, then it'll be one. Am I done yet? No, because it's not 10 yet. Okay, do another one. Uh, now it's two. Am I done yet? So basically what you can do oh. is put these two lines of code inside the conditional no. to minimize the number of the amount of code. You go no, no, no TV. var counter equals zero. And you keep the semicolon. No TV, you are in call. Counter plus plus. Um, and then change this to four. And that's your for loop. Oh, it doesn't like the number of sit-ups thing. <laughs> Less than 10. Uh, so because counter is our number, we say counter is less than 10. So this kind of, this structure kind of makes sense. We have our counter, which in this case was Miley and Gotham. So if Miley and Gotham say less than, is, it starts at zero, because that's the truth. Um, well, we aren't 10 yet. Do the sit up and then increase the counter. We don't need something on there. Um, we can change this to making an ellipse instead of doing a sit-up, because do you think computers can do sit-ups? No. Not that I'm aware of. Um, so this made, this just made 10 circles all on top of each other. We can actually use the number that it is oh, yeah. in the ellipse. You could say counter times two, counter times two. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Oh, because it's so small. <laughs> um, this, you know what is a really good example of this is bent square. Oh yeah. Let's search it up. It, it's right, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, there are 46 chats. Oh, it's someone's birthday. Happy birthday, Kyle. Kyle can do more sit-ups than your sister, push-ups? Yeah, sit up. My brother can you. do more push-ups than me. I'm well, you, you can all do more push-ups than me because I can't even do one. My birthday was on Friday. So. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're glad you're on the earth. It looks like a PewDiePie logo. Almost. Yeah, kind of. Super funky. PewDiePie is way different. His logo. <laughs> anyway, we've like... got... I So we're drawing squares now, so circles, but... Um, it's I times 20. I is our counter. I is our Miley and Gotham, keeping track of the four loops of <laughs> ups. Um, I times 20, I times 20. So as I changes the first time, actually, it starts at 20 and counts down. Minus minus is a symbol for counting down. So the first time they draw it, it's uh, 20 times 20, which is 400. It's the big one. Then it's 19 times 20, which is 380, this one. Then it's 18 times 20, which is 360, which is the next one down. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's one times 20, and then it's just 20 by 20. Tiny, tiny baby square. <laughs> that all makes sense so far? Because that's basically all I had to say about for loops. Let me just double check that. Variables and for loops, variables and... What? Oh, this is something else. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so show the syntax of for loops. So if you guys wanted to write a for loop, uh, would you know how to do it based on this? Yes. Good. Can uh, we do a for loop challenge? Yes, we can do a for loop challenge. 
as tra as is tradition, the four loop challenge is. Um, Wait, what? Bloop. Okay, I put up the chat in front of the whole screen. The four loop challenge is you bring up an empty project, try and make a four loop in five minutes. And then whoever's done, whoever's got something they like, can show us. Uh, oh in that five minutes, I will re explain four loops in case anyone's confused. Uh, timer. Good. <laughs> you guys ready? No, Go. no, no, yes. no, 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 no. Okay. Ready? Ready? Set. No, no, no. no. Why aren't you ready, Gotham? No. I'm ready. Bye bye. Okay. Ready? Go. Set. Go. Go. So, for Lou. Go. Go. Yeah, I, I clicked go. Uh, go. I clicked it. It's going. Let's see. Go. Who's the most popular YouTuber? I don't know. I'm confused from it. Who's the popular YouTuber? Anyway, um, He's no, serious. no screen graffiti, please. Thank you. Uh, so for loop, you've got the word for initializes it. The conditional-ish thing goes in the brackets. The conditional um, is I greater than zero in this case. Um, if that is true, it may proceed. If it's not true, then it stops proceeding. It does not. It stops where it is. We start. This part is where we start the counter. So in this case, it's kind of like a timer where it's counting down to something. Um, if it was me doing push-ups or sit-ups or whatever, it would go, it would start at zero. And then I minus minus or I plus plus means it gets bigger or smaller. Minus minus means one smaller every time. Plus plus means one bigger every time. Just like me doing sit-ups every time I do one. And this, this part of the code is the, the doing of the sit-ups. Color it red, make yeah, square. Color it red, make another square. Does that sort of make sense, my friends? A little. A little bit. What part of that is confusing? I'm not. I'm not even seeing it. You're not seeing it. I'm not seeing it because I'm, I'm. I'm doing my phone. Oh. Okay. Well, I had some questions. Some privately addressed questions in the chat. I'm double checking that I answered the questions that were asked. And I'm also drinking cold coffee because that's something you do. Is that from Tim Horton? Oh, hello. Random. Hi, Miley. How are you doing? Good. Zero comma two. Five. No, not four two five five four hundred. I'm gonna come check. Got three minutes, guys. Wait, what? You can do it. I'm showing my rectangle. Make a for loop. <laughs> I closed my wheel of names. Can we do conditionals too? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, the conditional I was just explaining of a for loop is a number, a number being equal to or less than or greater than another number. Um, you can do I equals zero. Can't you? Conditionals oh, yeah. though, conditionals can also be if statements. So can yeah, I do if statement? You can use an if statement, yeah. Sure. Um, the conditional isn't the if statement, it's the thing inside yeah. the brackets in the if statement, yeah. Yeah. So use it in while loops, use it. You can even just use it. You can assign something a truth value. Like I could say um, var bool equals, uh, that's like saying num or word or whatever, char. Bool is just a type of variable. Equals two times two equals four. Can y'all do that? Bad assignment. I gave you an assignment. Why is this a bad assignment? Is the timer done? Oh, you can't use your phone. Um, uh, is the timer done? Timer's got a minute no. 40 left on it. Five minutes is kind of a lot. So yeah, this will either be true or false depending on the conditional at the other side of it. Can we, can we just pick a project that already has a for loop? Uh, if you want to be a dirty cheater. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm could you do a project that requires a for loop and you finish that project? Sure. If yeah, you want to just show off a project with a for loop, that's fine. I mean, you're the one who asked for the challenge, so. Okay. I guess okay. you make the rules. Can I, can I show two projects? The one I, I used for loop and then the one I just typed the for loop. I want you to show me the one you made just now. Because if we were going to go through your projects, all of them, it, for every student no, it's, here, it's, we'd be here for 10 hours. It's only two. I know. I'm setting a standard. Uh, I'm looking at on the clock. 
Sorry? How much is, how much how minutes many? is on the clock? Oh, I keep covering up with your beautiful faces. 36 uh, seconds. Ooh, I, I got a thing. That, that looks 30 wrong. seconds. If you can't figure out how to make a for loop, that's okay. Do the four many colored circles challenge. Um, that teaches it pretty well. And then once you do that, you'll be able to play around with the information. And you allow the user to share their screen because. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, I will stop sharing and I will edit the share screen to allow multiple participants to share. Share. I shared it. <laughs> see? You this, got is them. this is mine. I don't think this is. I uh, see so you hear the for loop. A few options. You see the for loop? This uh, is like my if statement. I see Miley's if, if. if statements with looping circles and squares. Very beautiful, very yeah. colorful, very polka yeah. dot. And what? this is the other one. Oh, a tennis ball pyramid. Beautiful. Yeah. I changed it. No, it's not a ball game. Uh, here's you see Gotham's. Oh, I wait, see yeah. yours now. Okay, do you see mine for loop just to create this thing right here? No. Yep, the fence is. created with four loops. Nice. Create friends using four loops. That's one. And many circles. This. Can, can you explain? Uh, so good. That's another good example. So can you explain uh, how you made the fence with four loops? Oh, fence with four loops. Um, I created a for loop, making it ten. So if I if I I actually don't know how I use it, but I use it from the hatch reference menu. Okay. So basically what I think you did is you made, wrote some code to make a fence post and then you called that code for as many times as it would take to fill up the screen with fence yeah. posts. There's another one here for, I don't know That's why. That's what but. I did awesome. for my fence post. Beautiful. Good job. I need to go to Hutter's. Oh, trippy. I mean, it, it was over the origami cat project, but that is a beautiful is for loop. Excellent. I like your use of random stroke colors. That's a nice touch. So you guys seem to get it. You seem uh, to get for loops, which is beautiful. I'm changing it so that I can share the screen. Because Only. it is time for the next lesson, which is on arrays. And I actually have a prop to help me show you guys a raise. Um, I spent this morning taping together my drawers uh, in for my jewelry case. Are the numbers backwards for you guys? Can you read I don't them? see it. I can't see it. You can't read the numbers on the sheets? Can you oh. stop sharing for a second? Yes, I will stop sharing. That's I don't the think we can even see it, actually. Yeah. Oh, no, we can. We can. Uh, stop share. Oh yeah, now, okay. oh, yeah. See this? Can you read the numbers on them? I see one, one, two, three, four. four. Can't see. Because it's one, two, three, four, five. Er, uh, it's zero, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. It's yeah. zero, one, two, three, four. Is it backwards? Three, no. Is it backwards? No. No, no. no. Right. no okay. it's forwards. Yeah. So this is basically the concept of an array. Yeah. It's a bunch of little boxes that you can put things in, and the computer has them numbered from zero uh, up until the end. It doesn't have to be four. I only have four. This is the end of my array. But if I hide it, you know, just imagine it keeps on going forever and ever and ever into infinity. Because that's what you can do. Um, so you can say, you can specify with your code where you want to put things in your code. I have this coding box of secrets, coding bag of secrets. And they're just things I found around my room. So I'm going to pull one out and that'll be the first thing we add to our code. Okay. This is the first thing that I saw. So this is gonna what? go this is gonna go in position zero. If you wanna make some code go in position zero, you this, or I should show you the symbol for the an array. Um I will go back to my visual aid so we can talk about more complicated array maneuvers. But let me go back to my shooter game, which is my workspace. And does anyone have an idea why it would start at zero and not one? So zero is the first integer. 
zero is the first integer. It also goes by um, how many steps it is away in memory. Something. It also, you can think of it like my synapse. I started at zero. So the computer usually just starts at zero. It's like nothing's happened yet. And then there's one. So to make an array, you can say var my array. It's a variable, just like anything else. Array equals, to make an empty array, you do that. You can actually define an array with stuff in it originally. You can say var new array and then put a thing in it. For example, food list. Yeah, food list, my mango. That's a really good example of it. Um, the complicated thing is, oh, why are you like this? Missing semi it has a semicolon. That's because there's another uh -oh. word they can't detect. What's because you have the e okay. equal sign. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So we can also do stuff like var new, or so I can go, once it started defining, go new array at position three equals banana, banana. <laughs> and so that what? would be like, if I've got my array here, um, I don't have to fill up all the squares. I can go grab another thing. It's Elsa. It's a Funko Pop doll of Elsa. And I can put it in position three. Elsa at position three. But this could give me some problems. I would have to remember that there's nothing in here. So I'd have to have a system for checking if there's nothing. So that's why it's kind of good to organize things in arrays, but I can add things. Let's say I have the rest of those spaces filled up with a ducky and a Russian doll I got when I was three from an actual Russian person. That's why I can say that. Uh, and let's say I want to, let's say I want to switch out the duck. I don't like you duck. You're not pulling your weight around here. <laughs> I could so say my array and then the square brackets at position one, you, you would reference this chunk of the array. It's all a row of boxes. You would reference the second box by its number. So you would just reassign it. Say drawer at one equals, oops. I call this Babette the Builder. She's a Playmobil construction lady. Replace, so my array at position one is Babette the Builder. There you go. Mm. The interesting thing is when you want to remove something from an array, you use a function called splice. Um, we haven't used that much. I know. So we here's use it in falling ball. Yeah, falling ball is correct. It's a lot. It's easier to use arrays. It's easier to use objects when we talk about that if you know about arrays. So let's say my new like array. My Sorry. Do you like my background? Uh, I do like your background. Super cool. Let me move our new array. How would I add something to position uh, two, uh, one? See, the mango is at position zero. This is the first thing I put in. How would I add something at position one? My new array equals. What about my background? It's awesome, dude. I love it. You basically, you have to put the square brackets because those are the symbols for an array because it looks like a box. Then you put the index, which is like my little papers. New array at one equals, and then I would set it to orange. So that's like, um, stop share. That's like me going with my things and saying, my new array at position one is Babette the Builder. There it is. If I want to say at position two, position two, you can also use the add. I mean, these are falling everywhere, but you can use the add function as well. Um, and it goes like new array dot push. And then you put, I keep doing that. And in this one, you don't actually have to put uh, square brackets. Does anybody know what push might do? Creates a new object. Puts a new object into the array. Yeah, if I, if I was to do it on this one with Elsa, this array dot push, plunk. Actually, what it does is it looks 
along the road. Is this one empty? No, it's got a thing in it. Is this one empty? No, it's got a thing in it. Is this one empty? No, obviously I have eyes. Is this one empty? Oh yeah, it is. Elsa goes there. Uh, what if I want, I don't like my Russian doll because uh, she's too old, she's an old granny doll, and I want her gone, but I don't want to replace her with anything. I just, ugh, just, ugh, don't want you anymore. Gone. Oh, we can go array, the name of the array, so like new array dot splice, and then the index of the number of a thing we want gone. So in this case, what's the index of Russian lady doll? Two. So go array. And then in the brackets of dot splice bracket two, and then the number of things I want gone. Do I, is Elsa, are Elsa and Babette okay? I think I can keep them. So what happens is it takes her out, moves everything else over. So I'll put her back. I need another, uh, let's bring my duck back. Duck, you've been redeemed. If I want to <laughs> splice uh, Babette, she's like, you know what, I have work to do, I'm leaving. Dot splice at position one. And then all of these things get moved over. So what's, so I should have asked this first. I put this back. If I get rid of her, let's say I get rid of her, what will be at position one? Once Russian Babette doll. is gone. Russian doll. Russian doll. What will be at position two? Zudo Elsa. <laughs> and, then, and then what will be at position four? Ducky. Position four. Ducky. Nothing. We moved everything over, so nothing oh. anymore. Oh, oh sorry. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Sorry. Then we could add something. We could add with that back at the back, but we don't want to because she has work to do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so that's a race. Just let me. Are we done all the beginners? Um, I will always have a lessons? beginner and an advanced lesson because there will always be beginner and advanced people in the chat. Um, I call them that, but it doesn't mean that you guys go through stuff. Okay. There, I'm trying to, you know. Um, so right now, it'll be new array dot splice uh, orange. Let's say that. Uh, no, I have to put the position. So what position is orange at is right it? now? What position in the array do we have orange at? We're falling ball. It's at position one. Nobody's playing ball. And we only want to take out one item. So that's how you would write splice. So what we've done with our array. Dice. Splice dice. It's very ass. I hit insert by accident. So you make an array, mango. So now at position zero, there's mango. Now at position one, there's orange. What position will banana be at? 10. 10? Who agrees? Who disagrees? One. So on two. It would be at position two. You're right. And then I do splice. Which element did I take out? You took out position one and one object. Correct. Thank you, Miley. Um, so I took out orange. So now the array should look like mango, banana, no orange. So I can show you that by doing four. Uh, var i equals zero. Here's our for loops again. They're very useful for looking through arrays. And I can set, well, i is less than um, new array dot length. That means however many elements are currently in the new array when I call it on line seven. How many elements are going to be in the array by line seven? Two. Yeah, it's two. Uh, text. Mm. I'll do new array at position I. Uh, 200, 200, 200 plus I times. Sure. Um, and I'll set the fill color. I'm just being fancy with it. Why, why would you code unless you're going to be fancy, you know? This, this is my issue. Why am I? <laughs> so we've got mango, banana. I'll set the text, text size. size. 20. Now they're kind of overlapping, but text you get it. Mango, banana. If we get rid of this line, we have orange again. 
All right, that was a little bit dry, uh, but you know, we got to see some of my personal treasures, including Babette and Russian doll. Um, <laughs> and do you guys have any questions about a race? No. No, cool. Does anyone have anything they want to do before we end the webinar? Falling ball. Falling ball. We already did falling ball. There's something wrong with mine. <laughs> yeah, okay, do you want to share your screen, Miley? If anybody has uh, another recommendation of what they want to do, then let me know. But otherwise, we'll um, do a little debugging. Really on too ball. No, no, really. Can you can you try to get Veronica in our group project? I can text her. Yeah, but thank I you. I can't force him, I can't force her to do anything. No, no forcing. Just <laughs> like can you just tell her to come and help us okay. debug. So let's scroll up to the beginning of your project. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Is the uh, problem that it keeps restarting, or is it not? It's not interacting with. Yeah, that's with the move character, but that I like. If get mouse chart thirty, let's see this color. Um, then you make the character move the same way as the obstacles do. So what would I do here? Um, if inside get. the if statement. Yeah. So where's where's your code for making the obstacles change their Y position? Try Y plus thirty. Uh, try Y plus thirty. Really? So like, Where is that? Over here. I I like. Oh no, sorry. Um, char Y plus thirty is the location of the mouse plus thirty, so it gets to the bottom of the ball instead of the middle of the ball, because the middle yeah. of the ball is always going to be red. So. How, we need to fi figure out how your black rectangles are moving up the screen. Wait, it's that would probably be a draw up move obstacles or draw obstacles. Move up, move obstacles. Okay. Many obstacles. What's many obstacles? Many obstacles is um, the obstacles. Like I, I push the obstacles each time, and then so it's an array it's full array. of obstacle objects. Yeah. So if we call obstacles at a position, many obstacles at position I, what does that give us? Bye, Hutter. So what is what is many obstacles at position I? What kind of data is that? It's the array. Um, so the array is many obstacles, but at position I, it'll reach into the box and pull out a Russian doll. Except it won't be a Russian doll, it'll be... Do you know what you're putting into the array? And so fat that it's so animating. Yeah, it is. So the array is just the box. The array at position I will be the, con the contents of one of the boxes, just like Elsa or the ducky or Babette the Builder. What are you putting into your array? Do you know? For the array, I'm putting in um, like just the obstacles that. Yeah, occur. you're doing obstacle objects. So many obstacles at position I would be the object in position I of the array, in box label numbered I, and I is a changing number. So we look at that object dot Y. So what would that be? Many ops. If you look at line thirty nine. Many obstacles at position I dot Y. What is that data? That data is the um, the uh, the obstacles, like the number of random obstacles for the black lines. Uh, that's a good guess. It's actually the Y coordinate of that obstacle. The obstacle is the row of black, including the hole. It's the two rectangles make up the obstacle. So many obstacles dot y minus equals obstacle speed. What is that part? Minus equals obstacle speed. What is that doing to the y position of each obstacle? That's increasing, making it go up. Yeah. By decreasing the number, it gets closer to zero, which is the top of the screen. So yeah. if you wanted to make your circle move like that, you have to figure out what the y coordinate is in your circle and make it move the same way, like minus equals obstacle speed. Whenever it hits a black pixel, it should follow the same movement behavior. 
Okay, but then what's wrong with my code over here? Uh, hover over the. Like oh, this. you need a you need an end bracket. I have it. The... No, it's an end no. bracket. No, uh, uh, like shift this. shift zero. Yeah. It's an end bracket. Okay. End bracket is the one that the, the mouth. I know. Thank you. I see a lot of people shouting that it's four o'clock. It's like the cup end that points towards the code. Oh. So goodbye, Kai. Many obstacles at position Y. That would be the the black bar. But we want to change the position of the circle when it hits the black bar. So basically what that get code is doing, um, if you go to get mouse x try y plus 300, that's saying does is the ball running into a, a black bar? And then if it does run into a black bar, what do we want to happen? Okay. Uh, it's there in the highway 401. Thank you. I'm going a little bit over time because Miley needs some help. Uh, when the red ball hits a black bar, what do we want to happen? Um, you game it. over equals true. Just by touching the black? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> it stops. What happens is it moves up. It As looks it like it stops, but it really just follows the momentum of the black bars. So there's no actual physics engine here. The computer doesn't know that they're touching. It just knows that now the ball is moving up with it. So instead okay. of writing many obstacles gets further up the screen, we would make the ball go up the screen. And you guys can leave if this does not help you in any way. <laughs> So what is the variable that controls the ball's y position? Um, char y. Yes. So instead of many obstacles at i dot y, it would just be char y. You don't need to do at i dot y, because that only applies if it's an array. Oh, OK. See if it works. There you go. Then I would have to display the background. Uh, you would have to display it before, yeah. No, at ceiling collision. Okay. Why? Because if it starts getting pushed up, it doesn't mean you're automatically dead. You still have a chance to save yourself. Oh yeah. Bye. Let's see. What's that? Bye. Bye. Sorry, somebody was saying bye in the chat. Bye. Twenty-seven in chat. <laughs> so that yeah, that would. You would so, make something if game over is true. You need to make put up a red background. You can check the instructions for more help. Uh, I, can I don't know. A project today. I gotta go. I have a student, but I'll okay. see you later. Okay. Miley, can I come to a group project today? <laughs> have a great day, you guys. For like, for like at least thirty minutes. No, sorry. Like I can do it for twenty. Sure. Okay. Thanks. See you tomorrow, guys.